This is a story of a girl who's a military brat from all over the southern United States. She grew up as an only child and did a lot of things by herself. She built things with her dad and played outside. But she never really felt rooted to friends or a community. She began to feel that she wasn't very important. These feelings continued into middle school and it was really tough and high school was hard. And at some point she decided that she wasn't important and that her life was not worth living. She attempted to end her life the summer after her sophomore year, but thankfully she woke up in the hospital and that's where she found her faith. And she would later discover something that gave her life purpose, which was service. She started volunteering in an elementary school program called Gnu's Club, where children played games and learned about the Bible. She then became a Red Cross volunteer, working in an allergy clinic, and also helped plant trees. Her new way of connecting with the community brought her joy she never thought she would have. And that was then she realized that service had her heart. And that girl is me, Trinity Smart. When I applied to Swanee, I was very interested in the Bonner Leader Program. I applied, but I didn't get in. But I was really determined to be a part of service at Swanee, so I began volunteering with a senior named Sarah at Blue Monarch, which is a home for women and their children recovering from hardships. I applied to be a Canali that spring, and Robin saw the perfect fit for me. Partners for Healing, a free clinic for the working uninsured in Tallahoma. During my first semester, I had been an intern at the clinic and helped with various tasks and loved the staff. But Morgan, who was the site leader before me, had made a tremendous impact and I never saw myself being able to fill her shoes. Knowing that I loved the clinic and felt supported by Robin, I took the position. The road ahead wasn't easy because I had never felt like a leader at this point in my life. My journey to find myself really started here. I began to understand what true leadership was. The Canali program forced me to think about myself, my values, and how that transcends into my work. At first, I felt underfoot in my role at the clinic and that I didn't deserve to be there. Still, as I began to get my grounding, I let go of who I thought I had to be and was able to create change. During COVID, I created an online Spanish interpreter program, which is still being used, and I've been to various community events with the clinic and got a grant for an outdoor space. It was there I planted seeds for interns from Suwannee to gain broad experience at the clinic. They shadowed, took vitals, but they also had many projects and helped the clinic with grants and job boards and patient satisfaction. I began to know how to feel accomplishment through small victories, because that's what capacity building is. It was creating posters, infographics, and updating patient charts. These small wins brought joy to not only me, but the staff. The Canali program has allowed me to realize how to let go and find what truly brings me joy. I was able to put my all into being my sorority, Kappa Omega's community service chair for the past three years. And through my role, we were able to grow our membership to over 20 members who were all committed to the value of community service. We raised funds for Mort Memorial Food Bank, recycled plastic bags for the homeless, had multiple sticker sales and hygiene drives that benefited the clinic. As well as we spent hours in the community at places like the hospitality shop and housing swap. Additionally, I was able to grab onto the opportunities from the Office of Civic Engagement, like a spring break trip to New Orleans where we worked with a nonprofit called Lower Nine that was doing construction for legacy residents in the Lower Ninth Ward post Katrina and a winter break trip in Puerto Rico where we helped different nonprofits build community after Hurricane Fiona. My site and service trips over breaks and being KO's community service chair were some of the things I started doing because I thought I needed to to look good for medical school. But I began to realize that the things I thought would make me better, like a long list of clubs on my resume, were really holding me back. Letting go of labels and student organizations that were not giving me happiness gave me the ability to focus on what really mattered. My passion for community change through my service roles. As I began to let go, I realized I wasn't just releasing titles or jobs, I was relinquishing societal expectations for myself. I no longer had to achieve the narrative of the straight A, perfect person. Service at Swanee allowed me to find my passion and restore the drive for change that had been burned out by constantly comparing myself to others. I found that loving my community and wanting others to flourish meant that I needed to enjoy the same for myself. I started to love myself for it, including the parts that society still says I shouldn't. And this brings me to the last piece of my Swanee puzzle, discovering my place in the LGBTQ community. I never thought I deserved the space for these identities, but if I couldn't understand my whole self and where I fit in, how could I know how to show up for the community fully? 
I couldn't was the answer. But once I allowed my entire self to be present, no hiding, no armor, no walls, I started to realize the impact I could make in my place in the world. I will be spending my gap year in Memphis completing a post-Spoc health equity certificate, as well as working at a low-income clinic supporting the marginalized communities in Memphis. I would never have imagined this future for myself without the growth and strength the Canali program has brought into my life. Ultimately, my biggest takeaways are that letting go allows you to grab onto the things that give your life the most joy, and that we are human beings, not human doings.